in Greenville, Mississippi in 1919, John Burns, my grandfather, was born. The first cars were being created and the Wild West had just passed the torch to the Depression. Unfortunately, segregation was still very much alive, making it even more difficult to be an African-American child. My grandfather would only get to go to school from December to May, then he would have to pick cotton for the rest of the year, 12 hours a day for $1. When my grandfather turned 16, in order to join the Navy, he lied about his age. Several years before 1919, Wilhelm Kutze, my other grandfather, was born across seas in the German village of Dusseldorf. He was born into nobility, raised by a wealthy German family. Wilhelm, also born when technology was taking baby steps, decided to take advantage of the new age and create Hadoff, a company that manufactured tools such as cranes, saws, and eventually robotic arms. But as time evolved, so did the company. They eventually started to manufacture cars for many German car companies. Hadoff even started making its own brand name, Planes. Meanwhile, John Burns traveled around the world multiple times for many years during which time World War II took place. On the other side of the battlefield, Wilhelm Putzer had his own problems. The Nazi Germans demanded that all major companies share their support with fear. Wilhelm was forced to succumb. However, there was another problem. The majority of Hadoff's employees were Jewish. So throughout the war, he harbored his illegal employees and their families in his own home. During that time, living in Germany was very difficult even for its residents. When the Russians invaded, they bombed Dusseldorf more aggressively than any other city besides Berlin. But for some reason, Hadoff stood standing. Little after this time, the Nazi agents discovered his Jewish employees, but luckily the war had already ended. After the war, John returned to America to live in New York, where he met a fellow American raised on the Mississippi, Viola Hunt, a full-blooded Chicktail Native American. Though John was married before, he decided to settle down and have children with Viola, who was still a part of the military. John had two sons. The oldest he named John Jr., the youngest Jeff. John alternated weeks with his family and working with the military, while Viola raised her two children. Years later, John and Viola discovered they were going to have a third child, a young girl. They also discovered Viola had cancer. Doctors urged Viola to abort the child at the chance of prolonging Viola's life, but she refused. Doctors predicted Viola wouldn't live through the childbirth, but she did, and she named her child Hope. The war has ended, but Hadoff still stands. The company is hurt, but it will recover. To commemorate th this, they create the Putzer Elitzer, a plane still used today by recreational pilots. Though Hadoff is immortal, Wilhelm is not and he knows this. He's getting old, and though he has four previous wives, he decides to get married one more time and settle down. On a vacation to Switzerland, Wilhelm meets a maid working at the hotel he's staying at. Her name is Matilda. She's about 40 years younger than Wilhelm and quite poor. She's an illegal immigrant from Slovenia and is hardly making ends meet, but for some reason, the two hit it off. By the end of Wilhelm's vacation, the two decide to stay in Switzerland and get married. They had two boys, the eldest they named Peter and the youngest, Victor. Soon after Peter was born, they returned to Germany only to shortly move to Le Beau, a small medieval village built on a mountain in France. Years later, Wilhelm died. He split his money amongst his children and previous wives. He left the company hat off to his first child and he left all his possessions, including the castle he bought in Le Beau, to Matilda. Peter left and decided to go to San Francisco to pursue his culinary passion. After Hope was born, Viola died from cancer. In order to take care of Hope, John quit the military. When my mother was finished with middle school, she moved to Maryland where she met her best friend, Robin Long. When my mom graduated high school, she moved to San Francisco to go to college. By chance, Hope and Peter moved into the same apartment where they were introduced by their landlord. Shortly after, they started dating and the product was a child born February 25th, 1998. To this day, my grandmother remains in her castle in France. My uncle Victor lives in Switzerland with his wife and kids, and my dad still lives in San Francisco. 
My granddad lives with me and my mom. My two uncles and their children all live in Colorado. My non-related aunt, Robin Long, lives in Washington, D.C. with her children. And my mom lives with me.